All right, so today we're going to look at, for 15 minutes, we're going to look at the powerful drawing work of Peter Paul Rubens. So one of my favorite uh, draftsmen of all time. Um, just to give you a quick uh, uh, information on, on dates, I have it written down here actually in my hand, 1577 to 1640. So he was a Baroque artist working in Flanders, a Flemish Belgian area uh, artist. Okay, so you know that. Let's go on to the drawings and take a look at why it is so powerful. And then maybe I can pique your interest so you can go on and uh, look at look at his work further, especially his paintings too. Let's go there. All right, so we've got 15 minutes to take a look at uh, Ruben's work here. First uh, drawing we'll look at really quickly is his uh, self-portrait here. So just gorgeous, sumptuous work in if you'll notice here, I've got my little cursor down here, maybe a little hard to see, but just beautiful overall, uh, uh, quicker, sketchier contour line. He's working in black chalk, beautiful control of all the facial features um, in a very expressive, you know, less academic style and a little bit more intuitive, although he's using everything that we talk about in, in drawing all the elements and principles and rhythm and movement that he's got uh, again now using beautiful contouring line, quicker, sketchier line, but a great control of uh, scale, proportion, line weight, and also the various aspects of, uh, again, uh, all, all parts of drawing. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous drawing. So let's go on to our next one here. So Rubens did um, quite a bit of biblical painting. I believe this is uh, Daniel in a lion den praying to praying to, to his God. And, you know, lots of difficulty in this drawing. The undershot head and perspective tilting back uh, is quite, quite lovely. Nice control of the rounded quality of the head. Just overall beautiful drawing. Look at the subtleties and core shadows, control of anatomy through here, the almost effortless um, sketching of the hands, find that to be just, just amazing in through, in through here, just very loose, very controlled, little tonality he uses, um, the white chalk to heighten the highlights, light source coming, kind of coming down from the, the right hitting onto that clavicle through here. But notice the little changes in line weight, the expressive line weight, darker in through here, right? And the twisting and turning of these wonderful forms, just a, just a beautiful drawing overall. One of my favorite portraits by Rubens, and one thing that I love about it is the different colored chalks that he uses, the red here, and he mixes the red and the black for kind of an earthy, uh, in this case, kind of Caucasian -y, a tone. There's a little bit of the white chalk that he uses for highlights. Look at the beautiful control, the roundness of the eye, but the expressive quality in some of the uh, contouring and the quick sketching marks, you know, drawings don't have to be photo real. I try to get my students out of that until they know why they're doing photo realism. And it can be this, this lovely sketch quality. Let me blow this up a little bit. Look at the beautiful cross hatching in, in these areas. It's just gorgeous control of the pencil tip, the broad tip, the underneath of the nose, almost effortless. Look at the almost like dark little dots. So you can learn so much by looking at master drawings, the curls of the hair. Notice how the hair is really quite a bit almost more minimal and it's not drawing every strand, but rather drawing the rhythm. A lot to learn and a lot to love there, I think, with Rubens. So I th always think it's good to look at artists' preparatory sketches, pen and ink and wash sketches. This is exclusively, it's got to be exclusively out of his, completely out of his uh, head or imagination. So all of the little cherubs or the little pooty, you know, very tiny little head elbows, a little body coming down, a little gesture, very almost effortlessly, effort, effortlessly. So the, the probably the type of ink, I don't know specifically, but it wouldn't, wouldn't run uh, when you do a wash. So um, the ink lines won't uh, disappear. So probably uh, the line work is done first and then the wash comes on top of it. And a lot of times the wash 
is only two or three values. There's a darker value, there's a middle tone value, and there's in a very uh, subtle lighter value, like you see with the kind of the Virgin Mary here and, and probably what is Jesus in here looking down at cherubs and angels. Also composition, look at the beautiful flow that it's all laid out. So really gorgeous kind of celestial preparatory drawing. I love looking at, at all artists' preparatory work because you get to see how they're thinking about creating um, before you get to a final painting. This could be very small drawing and wind up um, being a preparatory sketch for a very large 15 by 20 foot painting that you might see in the Louvre. He has a whole room in the Louvre that's just fantastically um, uh, a great showcase for his work. So you don't want to forget about two, not just drawing figures, but drawing all of life. This beautiful sumptuous landscape has so much wonderful art going on. Not only the, the cylinders of the tree trunk as we're talking about drawing practice, look how curved they are. Look how he emphasizes over here the curvature of the contouring line, even in nature, right? The, this is so, the feeling of this is so real and so vibrant and yet so abstract when you get really close to it. It's dots and dashes and marks with a pen uh, and maybe just a heightened little sense of uh, some chalk. And I don't see a little too much wash in through here. So it's both chalk and it's pen. You can combine those two in a drawing. But all of the elements and principles, the cube, the sphere, the cylinder are going on through here. We see the light source coming from this side. but. Look at this beautiful kind of U-shaped composition in, right, and out of that. Just absolutely a gorgeous, gorgeous um, study. So as you're working, um, if you get obsessed about one topic, great, but don't forget about nature, still life objects too, as you're working with or want to work with the figure. You know, for all of us, the importance of studying other arts, artists and making competent copies. So Rubens was looking at Michelangelo, and this is a copy of one of the figures, probably a, um, a maybe an Ignuti from the uh, Sistine Chapel. But this is not Michelangelo. It's a, it's a fantastic representation of Michelangelo's craft and style, but I made sure during my research that it, that it wasn't. But it looks like Michelangelo. So not only is he getting the feeling of the gesture of Michelangelo, but he's also, isn't he, getting that the bulky, really bulky quality of what Michelangelo was about, which is really the sculptural essence uh, of the figure. And we get that Rubens. This is a Rubens drawing from Michelangelo. So the importance of studying other artists and making copies, um, I can't emphasize uh, further. Some of my favorite drawings from Rubens are just his portraits. The control, the likeness, the use of anatomy, and this shorthand style, if you will, of drawing. It's really almost borrowed from Velazquez, who knew Rubens. They were contemporary, and I'll show you Velazquez soon enough. But the symbolism, he's not trying to get everything perfect. See how loose this is, but yet realistic, the control of the quick, loose line, the darker little dots and dashes that make up a beautiful uh, portrait. He's gotten all that. Then he tightens up really at the face. So the tightest part of the drawing really happens in the facial features, probably in the eye and in the nose. And look how loose the hair is. The hair is barely there, just a mass with some dark right underneath. So a lot to learn here about controlling the craft of drawing. As a matter of fact, if you really want to learn to draw well partially to, uh, from just drawing, is to draw from your uh, heroes, your antecedents, your masters. And, um, and that's how artists trained at that time. Rubens um, talked about at length uh, training from not the live model, but copies and studies from the Louvre, from the Prado, from Italy, et cetera, where he could get to. So if you if easy, and so, if you use, excuse me, and so on. And then lastly, we'll end with this just beautiful portrait. One of my favorites from him, very soft, very delicate. All the head structures there, the cranium, back here, coming over, in through here, side plane of the head, roughly running through their jawline, whoops, jawline over here, 
right? She had really lovely, just beautiful craftsmanship in the eyes, the beautiful rounded eyes. Look at the eyelashes, just barely indicated there. But it's this, one of my favorite areas, this beautiful hatched line work that he has. Let me blow that up some so you can see that even more. I mean, it just doesn't get much better than that. Also notice the difference in chalks, right? From a red chalk here, a black chalk here under the nose, little, little absolute darks to separate the um, structure of the head further. And then also uh, I get a lot of comments about hair. Take a look at hair, it's barely there. He's just giving you an indication of the curls, right? rather than trying to draw every single curl. A little bit of mass darkened through here, a little bit of blended probably with the stump or maybe even a finger. See how it's a little bit redder here. And then some very quick chalk-like curls in through there. And he leaves the rest of the drawing roughly in through here. Very loose, the neckline of the, uh, the, the blouse that the woman wears, it's almost just effortless in its, its linear work. So everything is in control with Rubens. He is one of my favorites and hopefully he might be one of your favorites too.